This is the exciting time here at Tuskegee for our basketball program. We're about to announce our new head men's basketball coach. Uh, a new era is getting ready to begin. And I remember when we started this search, uh, that it was very important uh, to the president and to myself that we found the absolute best coach that we could find uh, to coach our men. Uh, and we're very excited and very pleased with the results of the search, because I honestly don't think that there is a coach in the country that has more experience than the coach I'm about to announce as our new men's basketball coach. Uh, he comes to us with <coughs> wealth of knowledge, wealth of experience at multiple levels, uh, believes in academics, and uh, the kids getting an education along with teaching them to be great young men. And that's exactly what we want here at Tuskegee because we believe in the same thing as graduating our students. Uh, I think his bio speaks for itself. Uh, and without further ado, I'd like to bring up our new men's basketball <coughs> coach, Coach Jerry Dunn. Thank you very much, Mr. Campbell. I had to come in from my right because I could never go left as a player. So I always try to do things coming from the right angle. But um, always a little nervous. I always say if you're not nervous, especially as a coach, then you kind of lost your edge. So um, I'm going to be brief, as my wife always tells me to do, to limit the time that I stand up, just uh, get up here and speak up, say what I got to say, and sit down, open it up for questions. But um, I'm very blessed. I'd like to thank God for this opportunity, very unique opportunity, a very special opportunity to be at a place of such high prestige academically. Uh, is Tuskegee University and uh, a place that has the brand that Tuskegee University has. So I, I, am, I am very blessed with the opportunity to be the head basketball coach here. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, the president, the seventh president here at Tus Tuskegee University, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, he really, really knocked it out of the park uh, when I came in for my interview, and I was really impressed with his visionary uh, thoughts about where we can go and, and, and what we can be uh, as a university going forward and as an athletic program and basketball to, to be specific. And I, I'd also like to, to thank Mr. Campbell for, me, for giving me the opportunity. I like uh, his vision as well about uh, where we need to go as a program uh, from an athletic standpoint as well as basketball uh, specifically. Uh, I also wanted to acknowledge, also wanted to acknowledge my wife uh, to my right over here, uh, Gwen. Uh, we're, we're, we, uh, we're, we're, we are a team. And anywhere I've been, uh, she's always been a very intricate part of things, as has my family. We're a basketball family. So when you get one, you get all. And uh, they, they are very involved. And my wife knows the difference now between a zone defense and a man-to-man. <laughs> She didn't always know that when we first got married. I have to explain some things, but I, I can tell you that, that she's uh, well equipped to kind of uh, critique the game and, and my coaching from time to time. So um, I've been very blessed to have her by my side for as long as she has been, and um, my kids as well. We, we were not able to be here today. Um, I, I've been around a, a lot of uh, basketball minds, and I tried to absorb as much as I possibly could, whether it was a coach who I worked for or a coach in another sport. And, and basketball particularly, particularly, I, John Beeline, uh, uh, the coach I worked for in Michigan, Mike Woodson, great mind uh, in basketball at the pro level, I uh, played for Bob Knight. Uh, I worked with Brian Hill as an assistant coach at Penn State. Bruce Parkhill was my boss at Penn State, my mentor, who really, really uh, paved the way for me to do a lot of things that uh, I was able to do at Penn State. Opened up a lot of doors for me. I can't thank him enough. Uh, a, a great friend and a great basketball mind. Uh, also, Rick Barnes and Joe Harrington and George Mason. Uh, and I mention these guys, not, not to name drop, but I mention it because they've all played very in intricate parts, very important uh, parts of my life in terms of the coaching profession. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge them. My goal here is, is to have the best Division II program in the country. 
and I know I got a lot of work to do, but this team had uh, success last year, so I, I know they understand what success is all about. Uh, lost nine players, so we got a lot of uh, work to do in terms of recruiting, but I want to take what we have here in terms of our personnel and help them to be as successful as we possibly can this year. We lost a lot of, uh, of scoring and a lot of product, uh, productivity in terms of scoring output and rebounding and so forth. But uh, it, it's my job to come in and, and teach this young team, and an inexperienced team, uh, how to win again. So uh, I got my work cut out for me, but I think I'm, I'm equipped to handle that. Uh, from here, I'd like to open up the, the floor for questions. Coach Dunn? Yes. Uh, just talk about, as you, you spoke about briefly, the success from a year ago, having to replace those guys. What did you see coming in that uh, intrigued you so much about this squad and the players that are coming back? Well, you know, we have a, a roster that uh, I'm not sure exactly who, who everyone is, but I know that there is a, 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 at the guard position, you know, I have an experienced experience guard, I'll have some frontline guys in terms of small forwards and power forwards that have some playing experience, uh, maybe limited, but um, the rest is, is yet to be seen in terms of finding out what they can and can't do. But I think anytime you start with a winning program, you have to start with guards who understand how to win and understand how to run a team. So that's a good building block right there to start with. So I, I, I've got to work from there. I've got to coach to my personnel. I have a system, obviously, but I, yeah, I think you always have to tweak the system according to your personnel. Put them in the best position they can be in terms of success as, as a player, and then helping the team be successful. So that's my main goal right now. With how the, the basketball team did last year, there's that good momentum with the program. How, how exciting is it to kind of continue that trend and even take them to that next level of success? Well, I, I think uh, what it does, number one, is it tells everybody who's not a part of the program and they're on the outside looking in that there's been success here and they, they can continue to be successful. And it also indicates that I, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of the success that they've had. I want to be a part of success moving forward and going to the next level. And I think people get excited about that. I'm excited about that. So I've got to go out and recruit the best student athletes that we could possibly recruit and, and bring them in here and, and, and get it going again. You mentioned the recruiting aspect. What's the importance in your mind to kind of keep a lot of these local kids in the area and keep them close to family but also build the program in that regard? Well, I, I think creating a culture, a culture is really important. Creating a culture that, um, you know, everybody's accountable, everybody's committed, and that's on the floor, off the floor, in the classroom, in the community. For me, uh, character and integrity are most important. Uh, academics, uh, gym rat, somebody who wants to work, sweat equity, really, really important to me. And that is a big part of building the culture, where, where you can trust the people that you're around. Teammates can trust each other, coaches trust players, players trust coaches. And, and we all become accountable and we all take ownership for, for what we want to happen in the basketball. And with that being said, I'm going to recruit the very best student athlete locally, regionally, and as I look at the five states around in Alabama, starting in Alabama and going around uh, with those five states that surround Alabama, uh, there's some good players and some, some recruiting areas that I'm familiar with. So you got to get about the business of getting that done. Do you feel like this team can repeat? again this year, or are you setting a timetable of where you should see things? Well, I think when you lose nine players, um, I think it would be premature for me to say that we can repeat. Um, we're going to do our very best to be as successful as we possibly can be, and hopefully by uh, the year's end, you know, we'll be in a position to, to get back to the tournament. Yes, question. Um, based on the success of this past year's team, you have the proverbial target on your back because you, you did the, there was so much success this past year's team. How do you prepare a team with, you know, re, with the opportunity to repeat or pre preparing to be that target everyone is out to get this year? Well, I, I think that there's a certain amount of pressure that comes with being a player, that comes with having success the previous year, it comes with the, 
head coaching position, but those are the type of types of things that help you grow. Those are the types of things that help you come early, stay late. Those are the types of things that help you get better uh, because now uh, it's about the process. I always say we can't worry about the targets, but if we take care of the process that allows you to be successful, then I, I think we can handle it in a very manageable way. Um, again, with a lot of inexperienced players, I have to make sure that, that within our practices and our scrimmages and things that we do, that I, I put them in a situation to learn as quickly as possible how to win under pressure and how to deal with adversity. Because there's going to be some adversity, especially when uh, you, you haven't been in that situation. And I don't think I don't think you can learn by just watching. I think you have to be put in the fire. A lot of guys haven't been in the fire. So I've got to try to make practice as tough as possible so the games will be easier. Uh, we have, I think, uh, one of I think nine games and eight of those games on the road out of the first nine. So we're going to get uh, baptized pretty quickly. What so, kind of system are you going to run defense? More man, more zone? Defensively, I'm a man to man guy, but I like, multiple, I like to play multiple defenses. So um, you'll see a, a very you know, 1 3 1, 2 3, man to man. Uh, maybe we'll pick up full court time to time, but a lot of that's predicated on the personnel. But I think no matter what you play, I think it all starts with man. You've got to be able to guard your man. You've got to be able to keep him in front when you're playing the zone, when you're playing man or matching. But I, I want to be aggressive. I want to be physical with whatever types of defenses that we play. Because looking at uh, personnel and looking at team, I'm not really sure where our points are going to come from because there was a lot of point production lost. So we got to create some situations where we can score easy baskets and they come from one outs. Uh, when you get defensive uh, uh, steals and, and, you, and you get uh, some deflections. And, and also, uh, I look at rebounding as well. We got to get some second shots. So just trying to manufacture some points where we don't know exactly where they're, they're going to come from just yet. Uh, we're going to build out, we're going to build out, our staple is going to be defense, but uh, also uh, we want to be a good offensive team as well. What are some of the character building qualities that you intend to teach the players? Well, one is one is respect, respect yourself, respect your teammate, uh, trust your teammate, respect the people in the university community and within the community in which the university exists. Those are real important things. Um, Serving them. You know, I, I think in order to be a good leader, you have to be, you have to be willing to serve. I think they have to serve each other. I've got to serve them. Uh, I've got to be there for them. Uh, we have to do so within the university community. And, and I, I, want, I want the culture to be such that everybody takes ownership from uh, the, the, the person that's in charge of, of, of the practice facility, the person that's in charge uh, when we go to the dining hall. I, I want everybody to feel involved and uh, be all-inclusive. Uh, and, and I want our players to respect the job that, that everybody has to do. And I think when you have that uh, trust and respect and accountability and, 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 and trust from each other, I, I think that it kind of builds a bond that, that can create success. Thank you.